Good afternoon. My name is Jeffrey Joseph Juliana. I was born on 9-11-1953, and my son, Devin Lee Jyoti Juliana, is an inmate in your correctional facility. Now, my son's had trouble with the law for a number of years. Um, I am his father, and in my opinion, having lived through this entire drama with my son, who I love very much, <clears throat> um, started when he was about four years old and was brutally mauled by a Doberman pincher, which literally almost took his head off. Now, uh, I don't know that people have looked at my son's situation going back that far, but to me, that's where the trouble started. He spent months and months in the hospital. He was on morphine as a little boy for an extended period of time. They did experimental surgery on him with nerve transplants taken from his leg, put into his neck, and he still has not full function of his face. <clears throat> now, what has this got to do with him going on later to become a repeated drug offender? And I think quite a lot. First of all, the trauma of that thing. Uh, I mean, uh, there was an infection when they closed up the wound, um, uh, which, which almost caused him to die. Um, and there was for terrible pain, and of course, to try to uh, mediate that, there was this, this long-term morphine, which is administered to this little boy for a long, long time. Now. In those days, we were living in Toronto, and, and financially things were not great, but a kind of a business miracle happened. I became very, very successful as a writer internationally. And what did that do? It took, out, took about just about all my time from my family in order to take care of my family. Now, this is something that comes up with a lot of businessmen. <clears throat> but in my particular field, <clears throat> excuse me, I had to be locked away in a room basically alone to uh, work on this very, very intense you know, writing work or go off to another country somewhere to promote it. And this didn't leave a lot of time for attending science fairs or baseball games or functions. Certainly, I took care of my family and loved them very much, but I didn't have a lot of personal time with them. As my son became a teenager, uh, there was, of course, the inevitable um, acting out of young men trying to find their own way in life and the people that he was hanging with in the small town in western New York outside of Buffalo weren't always the best people. Now, does that mean that my son is blameless or faultless? Not at all. Now, I've had many discussions with my son about uh, the way he's conducted his life over the past few years, the terrible price that he's paid, uh, the things that he's done to his family, the price that I've paid, never having ever done one of these drugs. <clears throat> but there is a point, uh, and I as a father, knowing Devin perhaps better than anyone in the world, comes when you realize that maybe enough is enough and that from what he tells me and from the way I feel about what he tells me, perhaps more importantly, I think my son has seen the error of his ways by the amount that he's suffered and the price that he's paid to get where he is now, which is sitting in a prison cell. <clears throat> I don't know the concomitant amount of years that my son has spent in jail. I suspect it's well over five. That being said, he is a nonviolent drug offender. His offenses, from what I know, include buying and selling drugs. Now, that's clearly illegal, and there is an appropriate punishment, which has been exacted by the state just for that series of infractions. But I do make the point that my son has never been violent, and that in talking to him and communicating with him just recently over the last few months, I see a great change in Devin. He told me it's just, as far as he's concerned, it's over. And he's not going to engage himself in these kind of antisocial, illegal, unlawful, and immoral uh, activities any longer. He's too old. He's paid a price. His family's paid a price. His children have paid a price. And it's just not the thing to do. Now, in reference to the character of my son, he's extremely intelligent. 
he is, if he had yet applied himself in a more productive way, probably the best salesman that I've ever seen in my life. That doesn't mean he's a liar. It doesn't mean that he's a psychopath. <laughs> it means that he's darn good at selling. And as I say, if he would and could come out of prison and uh, pick up some kind of business um, uh, profession, and he is a natural businessman, uh, as am I, but per I think even he exceeds my own ability uh, in reference to uh, convincing people um, of the value of a product. And uh, unfortunately, it was the wrong product. Um, so uh, without taking up too much of your valuable time, I would just like to say that my son has now been in prison for over two years for this particular uh, infraction. Uh, and um, I have seen a very positive change in him. And uh, I uh, run a company which is a design company um, uh, for fashion and bag, fashion, fashion bags and accessories, uh, which we're just launching internationally. And I can and will and have certainly offered Devin uh, a job there in sales and marketing, uh, the thing that I think he was pretty much born to do. So, you know, I'm his dad. I don't make excuses for his behavior. I've suffered from a lot of it. The first thing he said to me when I talked to him after a number of years, fairly recently, was, Dad, I'm really sorry about all the things I stole from you. And it was quite a long laundry list. But, um, you know, uh, although the state has a duty to protect itself and its citizens from uh, these kind of, uh, uh, you know, people with these kind of uh, dubious agendas, I know that there's uh, also room for um, uh, people to uh, reform themselves uh, and to uh, turn over a new leaf. And I believe sincerely, of course I don't want my son in prison, but I'm not here to lie or put out a phony alibi for him. With all my heart and with all the truth that you know, I can muster and all the love that I have for my son, I'm a responsible person businessman. Now, I'm 59 years old and I've, I have no criminal record of any kind. Um, I've never had any addictions uh, and uh, you know, I'm a fairly straight shooter. And uh, he needs to cowboy up, step up to the plate and accept responsibility for what he's done. But I think he's done that. I feel he's done that. And I would ask uh, you to please consider releasing my son into a program or whatever, I, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with, you know, actually the way that the, the, the mechanisms of how this might work, but to release my son and give him another chance to enter to society and uh, try to be uh, <laughs> entirely more reasonable uh, than he has been in the past. He has it in him. He's a smart fellow and he's talented and he can do well um, if he makes that ex uh, effort. Now, I'm 100% behind him. And I've forgiven him, you know, for what uh, he's taken from me. Um, you know, I've lost a lot of money, but I don't really want to lose my son. You know, at the end of the day, what's more important than family? So please, um, if I may, uh, I'd like to ask you to consider um, his parole. And um, I will do everything I can uh, to, uh, to stand behind him and uh, make sure that he stays on the straight and narrow and doesn't create any more difficulties for anybody in any regard uh, as far as is humanly possible. Now, I will say one other thing. Uh, my best friend in the world is Dr. Martin Gordon Shifford of Billings, Montana. And Marty <clears throat> and Marty and I are very, very close friends and for decades. And he is a very well-known, respected physician. I've talked to Marty yesterday. And I asked him, would you be able to uh, enter into some kind of uh, mm, mm, uh, practice of, of, of monitoring uh, Devin's mental and kind of physical welfare when he gets out? Um, I know Devin told me that he wanted to take uh, possibly Suboxone even though he's not addicted to drugs now, just maybe in hopes that it would never even occur to him again to do that. Now, that's, that's his 
idea. That's his coming forth saying, hey, look, you know, when I get out of here, I just don't want to have any problems. So maybe, and I don't know if this is appropriate, I'm not a doctor, I should get on Suboxone just so I won't even consider going back to the drugs. But basically what we have here is a drug problem, a drug problem that's gone on since that little boy was shut up with morphine every four hours when he was in the uh, Toronto Children's Hospital. Um, all the complicated reasons why people live the lives, their lives the way they do uh, is not for me to say. It's only for God to know. But I do know my son, and I would like to ask you to consider the possibility of his parole. Thank you very much for your attention today.